Good morning once again, Trinity. It's good to see all of you here today checking in on our Facebook for online worship today. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on Sunday morning or on life's journey, no matter who you love or how you identify, we welcome you into the full life and ministry of this loving congregation. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Trinity. A couple of announcements real quick. Uh, remember that we are engaging in Sunday school once again via Zoom. And you can uh, check out our Facebook page, our website, or just text me or the office, and we will make sure you get the login for that. Our book discussion on white fragility continues on Monday evenings. We have two more Mondays, so you got a couple of chances to join us still at 7.30 on Monday evenings. Again, all this information is in your weekly update that you get by email each Sunday that has an order of worship also um, or gives you a link for the order of worship on our webpage at commonchurch.com forward slash OFW. I want to say thank you once again to all who are stocking the community pantry. Um, thanks particularly to Trish Wynn who came by yesterday and stocked it up uh, with some supplies that uh, Cindy and Ken brought. And all the others of you who are continue to, con continuing to stock that pantry, thank you. Uh, you will see it today and you will let me know probably that the door has been taken off of it. And uh, I have reached out to Eric and also Jack and hopefully we'll get that repaired today. So we do know about that and uh, we'll try to get that fixed as soon as possible. Uh, thank you again to all who bring the pill bottles. Please make sure you clean those before you bring those and that will save Lonnie some trouble on getting that done and we can get them dispensed more quickly to the places of need. Uh, also one official announcement from the pulpit that we have a called congregational meeting next Sunday. That will be at 3 p.m. That was the time that we had to get the shelter at the park, which is Paul's Kitchen at Les Myers Park. That's at 3 p.m. But please let us know if you want to attend in person, if you don't have good access to uh, online services. Uh, we can take up to 25 people there. You will have to mask uh, the whole time you're there. And we have a few people already signed up for that. So let us know if you'd like to attend in person. We are going to also do that live via Zoom, and we will send out the link for that this coming week. So next Sunday, 3 p.m. Also this afternoon, 1230, consistory meeting, just to make sure we have our agenda set for that congregational meeting, which is about uh, funding repairs and replacement of our roof on this building and the educational wing behind me. Also, uh, please do check out the order for worship each Sunday, and you can find that at commachurch.com forward slash OFW. It includes uh, a children's worship sheet now, and it also has for today the lyrics of the music that will come, the contemplation music that will come after the sermon, which you may be, be interested to follow along with. With that, be reminded that this is the day God has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it.
we have quit the lake and joined the worship and hope of reconnecting. Covenant is possible. We cross the boundaries that divide us by ages and stages, ethnicities and genders, hurts and disagreements. Love is possible. We open our hearts and ready our hands to reach out to one another and discover one who is within and beyond us. Touch is possible. We open our eyes to the screen, looking for God. We connect our earbuds and listen for God to speak. Change is possible. Let us worship together wherever we are and connect in love however we can. set up the camera here. God is still speaking, we say. Are we listening? Can we hear? When I was about seven years old, one fine Sunday summer morning, I found myself having gotten ready for church with a lot of time left on my hands before everyone else was ready to go. Mom was busy in the kitchen getting dinner ready for when we returned, and by dinner, of course, I mean lunch. And I remember there were some peas soaking on the kitchen table that soaked overnight for cooking later that day 
And I did what many of us do when we're waiting. I got bored. And I thought, would it be a hoot if when someone asked me something, I could just say, I can't hear you. I've got beans in my ears. Go ahead. Laugh. I deserve it. Maybe it was my way of shutting out the world. I don't know. Uh, but I took a couple of those peas and put one in each ear. A little bit too far, but that's another story, and I don't want to go there. The fact of the matter is, I couldn't hear very well then. Sometimes today, I still don't hear very well what someone is saying. Sometimes that's what the person is saying in front of me verbally, and then sometimes I even find that in written communication, such as text messaging and emails and that kind of thing, I don't always pay attention very well to what's being said. The other day, for instance, I was standing, there was someone standing right in front of me, uh, talking to me, and, uh, and I, was, I, was, I was looking at my phone. And whatever it was, I don't know if it was a text message or a, a Facebook message or an email or I don't know, it could have been anything on my phone. Whatever it was, I was completely thinking about something else while this person was talking to me. And I realized, because it's been brought to my attention uh, before, that it is important when someone is talking to you to actually make eye contact and pay attention to what they're saying. I realized that I wasn't listening. And it's important to listen to the person standing in front of me, particularly when it's my wife. And I realized this, and I looked up and I listened. I hope Teresa will back me up on this. <laughs> so verbally, I wasn't paying attention. And then later that same morning, I was texting with Lisa Gotka. And uh, her mother's been staying here, and she said shortly we'll be returning back to Ohio. And then we were text messaging back and forth, and I, uh, and I found myself asking about uh, how old her mother is. And I didn't get a response right away, and I started looking back through the, through the text stream, only to find that in the very previous text that she had sent, she had plainly told me her mom was 90 years old. And I completely missed that even in written communication by text. And part of the reason I missed it uh, in my defense is when she was talking about her mom traveling so much, I really wasn't thinking of her as 90 years old. And so I completely missed that. And you know, whenever I find myself not always paying attention to what someone is saying, it isn't that what I'm thinking about isn't also important. It can be very important. It's just that I have to remember that the person standing in front of me or the person with whom I'm having a conversation, sometimes three at once, on my phone, that that is the person most important right now in that moment. And it's no wonder that we have trouble. I assume that maybe you have some of the same issues with this as I have had. It's no wonder that we have trouble listening. We're in a pandemic. We're doing things a lot differently than we did before. We have very little face-to-face -face communication with people outside our house. And so everything is new. And things that we used to do only occasionally as a part of our work or as a part of our daily life or as a part of our communication with family or friends or church, things we used to do some of the time electronic communication, are, those are now like part and parcel of how we communicate quite often. So that's challenging. It creates a constant tension. Uh, the masks even or the shields sort of dull my senses. I don't know about yours. Uh, my senses were already kind of dull to start with. <clears throat> and listening is even harder than it was before. And I'm sure someone's going to say, yeah, and you're getting older, and your hearing probably isn't what it used to be. No, it isn't. 
I don't know to what degree the new adaptations that have been necessary for navigating this pandemic have uh, affected our listening. But I have a sneaky suspicion that many of us were already having some trouble with that before, before all this. <clears throat> but our story today from Matthew gives me some hope around that. I'm surprised that Jesus seems to be no exception when it comes to maybe not paying attention to the person standing in front of him. He didn't always hear either. We pick up on the story from Matthew 15, following, of course, as you know, on the hills of the feeding of the 15,000, and just before yet another miraculous feeding of probably 12,000. Hear the story from Matthew 15, beginning with verse 21. Jesus left that place and went to away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. I'm going to pause right there. I need my microphone under here because you may not be able to hear me right now very well. You see all the things that we miss. I promise I did not plan that. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her. Kind of reminds me the way my dad used to do sometimes when I would ask a question. It was like he didn't even hear it. So his disciples came and said, Lord, send her away. She keeps shouting after us. And he answered to her, finally, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, it's not fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their Lord's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish and her daughter was instantly healed. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. So the question that I have here that raises up for me is, why didn't he hear her to begin with? What was going on with Jesus that either he wasn't paying attention or he didn't hear what she was saying, that he ignored her? Maybe, maybe, he was distracted like I sometimes got, or get. Maybe he was listening to something else. Sort of like my distractions or the peas in my ears. Maybe he was listening too closely, perhaps, to his traditions and his religion. And maybe those things had been shoved into his ears for a long, long time. Maybe he had even shoved them in himself. Maybe he was listening too much to his religious teachers and not enough to this present moment and his present calling within that tradition. Maybe he was thinking of his own unquestioned beliefs and ideologies that really no longer serve to serve anyone very well. Least of all, this person in need before him. So there's a part of me that looks at this story and says, okay, if Jesus had trouble listening, <laughs> if Jesus had at least a little trouble expanding his understanding of why a Canaanite woman should have his attention for healing, then why should we expect that we might not also have some trouble with expanding our attention 
to those with the greatest needs and in the direst of straits. So I find a little bit of grace in that and some hope for those of us who have trouble listening or paying attention. So I say be kind to yourself when you notice you aren't listening very well to the person in front of you or in the conversation you're having by text or on Zoom. But then also be present. And how do we do that? Again, I want to look at what Jesus does in this situation. How does he do that? He begins to listen. Now, he gets a little prompt from someone else. Actually, his disciples sort of prompt him into either send her away or pay attention to what she's saying. So he's forced to do something. But he listens to reason. And here's how that reasoning happens. I think you all know that by now that this that a Canaanite was not a uh, not from the same region as Jesus. She was from across the border. <laughs> and I don't mean like the border with Canada. I mean more like the border with Mexico or one of those other countries that many normal Americans hold in contempt because that's what they've been taught to do. And it's clear that Jesus understands himself to be sent to his own religious people and his own nation. In fact, he says, I was sent only to Israel. And he says, it isn't appropriate, appropriate to take the children's bread and throw it to the kunarios, or kunarios, the dogs. And then the reply of this contemptuous foreign woman gets his attention. The translation in most Bibles has her begin with, yes, Lord, which I read in the new RSV, yes, Lord, but literally in the Greek, that's not what it says. In the Greek, it is nai kyrie. And nai doesn't mean no, it also doesn't mean yes. What it means is literally truth. She says, truth, Kyrie, truth, Lord. And then what follows literally should not be but, rather in the Greek it is and, Kai is and, not but. And what she says there is, nai Kyrie, truth, Lord. And therefore, therefore, the little dogs, Get the bits that fall <laughs> from Curion, their Lord's table, the same word. She addresses Jesus as Lord, and then she says, and even those who aren't a part of the Master's family and persons, get what falls, even the little dogs, get what fall from their Lord's table. <laughs> In effect, the Lord is the Lord also of the dogs. The dogs also belong to their Lord and to their Lord's table. And of course we know she isn't talking about dogs. She's talking about people who are thought of as dogs. And we know she isn't talking about a dining table. We know she's talking about, talking about valued acceptance in society and equal access to the benefits that are. It's an elegant argument she makes in just a few sentences. And he, Jesus, submits to her. Quite different, I gotta admit, than what we might read from Paul about women submitting. And then note this as well. It isn't Peter who walks on water who is said to have had great faith. Rather, Jesus says, oh, you of little faith to him. 
It's this Canaanite, this Syrophoenician woman from across the border that is said to have had great faith. Now let's put that into context as well. This is the only time, the only use of the word great, faith. It's the only use of the word great to describe faith in the whole book of Matthew. There are plenty of other opportunities to say people have great faith, but, this, but, but, but it doesn't happen in other places. Only here. Only here. In fact, nearly every time faith is described even in the whole Bible, it most often refers to a characteristic, or whenever great is used in relation to faith anywhere in the Bible, it most often refers to a characteristic of God. She never walked on water. She never attended church or synagogue. She never read the Bible. She talked to men in public. She argued with Jesus there too. And she is the one in all the Bible who Jesus says has great faith. Great faith is the critically thinking faith of a woman who will not take no for an answer when it comes to the well-being of her children. Read into that whatever you wish for this moment in history. Great faith is displayed by a strong woman who literally speaks the truth to power. Great faith is the thinking faith of a woman who will cross the boundaries of social norm to get the help and healing for her daughter. Mental healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing, economic healing, because they're all connected. Great faith is a faith that refuses to listen to what they say about her and demand action from those who have the power to change the social, political, educational, religious, and economic systems in her life to provide for her daughter's health care and well-being. Jesus, though against his custom, against his own faith, even against his own belief about himself and who he was and what his mission was, finds a way for compassion to prevail on behalf of those his religion says do not qualify for benefits. How does he come to see it that way? He listens. He listens deeper than his own tradition of religion, deeper than his own ideologies, deeper than anything his family has taught him. He listens. He takes the societal, political, social, and religious beings out of his ears, and he listens to the need of a woman who was discounted, cussed, disgusted, likely laughed at, demeaned, devalued, and disheartened, and dare we say, a nasty woman. And by her word, Jesus is convinced that compassion ought to be inclusive if it's going to be authentic. You see, how we see others, the words that we hear about them sometimes get stopped up into our ears. And it changes our perception of who they are. How we see others affects how we hear others. So change your perception and you can change your behavior. Change your behavior and you can change the world. That is what Jesus would do because that is what Jesus did. He started listening to her. To her. To her. So be kind to yourself when you find you're not listening. You're in good company. Jesus had to learn this too. So can we. Let us learn to listen to the strong, contemptuous women among us because they have truth to tell us 
for this moment in history. Let us listen, for God is still speaking. Amen. that. Um, <clears throat> do look at those words if you get a chance this week at uh, commachurch.com forward slash OFW. Um, Hear the voice of God so tender was the name of that um, by Skinner Chavez Mallow. Hear the voice of God so tender gathering us in righteousness giving as our sure defender steadfast love and faithfulness. Bless God's holy name together as the Spirit brings new life, giving as our sure defender steadfast love and righteousness, healing and forgiving, listening. We join our hearts together for our prayer time. Please do remember to let us know your prayer concerns and uh, the way we're doing our videoing on Sunday morning now, I can't see the screen, so if you're sending it by Facebook in this moment, then I'll see it later and I'll respond and I'll add it for the following week. Um, but a couple of folks I do want to uh, update you on. Uh, I request prayers for George, um, who's just having a hard time right now. And uh, also, uh, for the Reverend Bill Campbell and his uh, wife, daughter, and mother-in-law um, who have COVID. And Reverend Campbell is a colleague of mine and uh, Reverend Bonds and uh, Jim Staunton's uh, colleague of ours who attends a church in China Grove. And uh, he is, is hospitalized and Please, written in ICU, so please remember Reverend Bill Campbell. Also, Heather Burns, Reverend Mark Burns' wife, and Mark Burns, uh, who is the pastor at Mount Zion UCC in China Grove, we remember them. Uh, Heather is under hospice care, and so we remember them in our prayers, too. Um, Lisa, we remember Lisa, who was finishing up chemo and fighting the fight against this cancer. Remember her and others who are in the same place doing the same kinds of things. And of course, we remember school begins again 
mostly online, I think, in most places. So students and teachers and the parents who will all be involved in school in a much different way. We remember places in our world like Beirut and its devastation. There are some celebrations coming up and uh, one of those is, uh, is my own birthday coming up on August the 19th. Uh, Robin has a birthday on the 21st and also Bryson and Tyler, I'm sorry, Bryson and Tanner, who are twins, have a birthday on August 22nd. So happy birthday to all of you. Congratulations to Dan Cecina. Uh, some of you may remember him. Dan was a part of our congregation for a while and he was on uh, staff at Catawba for a while while Corey was there. Went to Florida, is at University of Florida, and uh, just completed a master's in education degree in student personnel in higher education. So congratulations to you, Dan. Um, also, Michelle Ammerman has a new book out entitled, I Can Finally See. You can find that on uh, Amazon. So uh, kudos to you. It's an excellent book, I recommend it. Great story of her relationship uh, with someone that's very important for us to hear right now. Let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for this day. We're grateful for our time together and all that has happened to bring us together in this place, in these varied places from which we come together here. Thank you for your abiding presence in our lives, challenging us with your word, moving us to move beyond our boundaries, out of our comfort zones, and to recognize your very essence in the people standing in front of us. God, we pray that you will be with those whose names we have called for prayer. We are mindful of their needs. We're mindful of many folks in our lives with great mental health needs right now. This story from our gospel reminds us of just how difficult it is to access healing and health care for mental health. For all those who are suffering and dealing with that, oh God, we pray for your comfort and peace and for access to benefits, much needed benefits. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray, O oh God, for those who are grieving. We ask your comfort and peace in their lives. We pray for those who are recovering from illnesses and surgeries. We pray especially for those who are suffering and hospitalized with breathing and respiratory problems due to COVID. For Reverend Campbell, we pray. For his family, we pray. For others under hospice care and others still battling, battling, battling cancer, we pray for strength and hope and healing in ways that we might not even imagine. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Dear God, we pray for all those who are returning to a very different school way this year. For teachers prepping for their classes, some in class, some online exclusively, others some sort of mix. And God, we hold our breath with teachers and parents and students about the spread of this virus. God, we pray for their safety. We know how important education is. Maybe, oh God, what this will help us see is how supremely important is the public educational system. That in so many ways is a way to help people gain access to connect the dots of the systems in our lives and to rise in spite of those systems to make not only themselves but the world a better place. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers for our students and teachers and parents and administrators and all of our school personnel 
for our hospital personnel and healthcare workers, first responders, firefighters, police officers. Be with them in these difficult places and jobs right now. Give them what they need to do their job well to keep us safe, all of us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, be with all those who are suffering right now in whatever way, shape, or form. I imagine, oh God, even our leaders are suffering in many ways. So help them and help us as we move through yet another cycle of elections. Help us, oh God, to make sure everyone has equal access to voting who's eligible. Because we're all important for that. So help us. Do in whatever way we can make that happen for those with the least amount of access. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers for safe and secure elections and for our leaders. Hear the many other prayers, O oh God, that we are crying from our hearts wherever we are now for our families and for our children, for our parents and grandparents, for our friends, for those unemployed and seeking employment. God, in your mercy, hear the prayers of our hearts. Hear, O oh God, also, even in the midst of these needs, our prayers lifting up and celebrating birthdays and anniversaries and accomplishments of graduations and book publishing. Thank you, God, that people are still going forward with their lives. God, in your mercy, hear all our prayers and hear us as we pray as Christ has, caught, has taught us. Our Mother, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, I invite you, I say thank you, first of all, for continuing to support this church's ministries with your offerings and donations. You can give those now. You can go to paypal.me forward slash comma church, click that button and give securely to the ministries of this congregation. Thank you. You can also drop those in the mail slot or mail them in. Either way, blessings on you. Our offering will now be received.
give you thanks, O oh God, for these gifts, for those who have given from their hearts. We ask your blessings on them. We ask your blessings on those who these gifts will serve in the pastoral ministries here, the music ministries here, and the ministry of organization called administration, and in many other ways that these gifts will bring good news to those in great need. We give you thanks and ask your blessings on them. May it be so, may it be so. May it ever be so. Now in the name of all that is holy, together we all say, Amen. Go now, listening with all your ears. Go now, paying attention to that person in front of you. Seeing God wherever you go. Go now, listen, for God is still speaking. Amen. next